Hi, I'm Rich with New Life Scientific, and today I just want to show off this GeneVac HT12. And the reason I want to go over this, especially on a video, is the number one, the amount of work that I did to this to, to really get it up to par. And number two, I did some modifying on this unit. And normally on, the, on these uh, HTs, um, it would come in with a, what they had, the CV Pump 100. And they actually upgraded it now to a, another pump that's a spiral pump from Edwards. But I want to kind of go over what I did to this unit. Now this bottom section here, it's still part of the original CVP 100. And what I did is I eliminated the top half, which is essentially the vacuum pump part of it. And I just fabricated a cap put on there. And then I just took a standard vacuum pump that is off the shelf um, is, that we use for a lot of our freeze dryers and applications like this. And I just set it on top here. And then I actually installed a valve here that's, that's running off the HT12 uh, software up here and also controlling the pump itself. So essentially you can uh, put any pump here and it just plugs into the back and then insert this on top. But this is the pump that we included with it. And we have the quick oil change valve here that we always put on our pumps. And then also, like always, we always give you the evacuation pump here so that it just easily, simply plugs in there, open the valve and do a really quick oil change and then refill it up here and it eliminates all the mess. So this is modified part of it. It uh, works really great. It's just taking, like I said, the standard pump that they offered in the old days and modifying it to put a, an upgraded pump on top here controlled by the same electronics. And it works great. Um, I've done this before on another unit. I wanted to point this one out again. Um, so that's that part of it. Now we're gonna move up to the actual machine and we're gonna go ahead and just open up the door and talk about some of the things I've done. Um, first of all, um, I always like to replace the screens because most of the time the older screens are very dim, really hard to read. So I, I pull the control panel off and I put the new screens in there and reassemble it. And then also I just paint this outer um, casing too because it gets so scuffed up here usually. And then on the inside, uh, a lot more work was done. Uh, when we got this unit in, I removed the whole um, spindle assembly, remove the door assembly, because a lot of times you get vacuum leaks in these areas. So um, I always take them off and re-lube all the grease or re-lube all the, the seals in there to make sure we're getting the integrity of the vacuum in the chamber, back up the spec. And then of course I go through and clean um, everything really thorough um, because sometimes you get a lot of dust buildup and, and uh, corrosion type um, in the um, in the in the swings here but like I said this whole assembly was removed cleaned re-greased the seals bearings everything inspected this one actually has a, a newer a bearing assembly in it where it's runs super quiet um, and then in the background you can see the lamps in the back um, those are all made sure that they work the cool light heating back there um, and then underneath um, I always pull out this drawer here where all the electronics are in and go over and, and check to make sure everything's in order there. And um, while I'm in there, I replace the drive belt on this machine. And again, just looking for anything that needs to be uh, upgraded. Also on this, this has a variable speed drive and I updated a, a newer version on this so that this thing has essentially been really upgraded um, the integrity is, is back to where it was when it was in factory. So a lot of time involved in these, um, but they, they're well worth it because they're solid pieces of equipment. I mean, this is a chunk of metal here that's not going anywhere. The door seals are usually never have a problem with. And just simply keeping it cleaned up and running, um, hardly ever any problems with it. Um, but like I said, I just want to point out a lot of these options. And as we move over here again, um, the top been removed. I've been uh, inspected the refrigeration, replaced both seals and both of these caps here.
to get the vacuum integrity, especially here. Um, calibrated the vacuum settings to make sure that's on, the temperature settings. And then uh, put a new hose here, a heated hose, rewrapped it with insulation. And of course, you know, new vacuum hoses here coming down. And a real nice option on this unit that some of these don't have is normally you'd have a shutoff valve here so you could drain um, the condenser after it's defrosted. Well, this actually has an automatic defrost built into it. A drain where it will actually open up after the defrost cycle, drain and then shut and then be ready for the next cycle. So you can program it into here, um, which is very easy in the controls. You can go to the manual or you can go simply program in the defrost and drain so that when you come back in the morning, everything is done, ready to go for the next run. So that option is really nice, which you don't see a lot on the VC3000s that um, are out there. Like I said, I, I've done a lot of these. I've got spare parts for about every area of these. So if there is an issue or a problem, there, it's um, usually an easy fix for me. I've got boards. Um, I've got, uh, like I said, part machines that I easily pull um, parts off or even order new parts. So, um, like I said, spent a lot of time with it, but it's a really nice machine now. Um, we're just going to fire it up and you just hold the close, push the door, hold the close button until you hear the beep like you just heard. And I'm going to just run this test run on here and you can just simply hit start, hit start again. We've checked everything and now it's going to, graph is going to come up and Right now, I've got the, the channel one and channel two temperatures. They are installed there so you can monitor your temperatures and use your cool heat option back there to really get precise um, temperatures on your samples. So really nice, heavy duty machine. Everything works, works great. Um, the vacuum pulls down all the way to zero on this like it should. The temperatures all work great. So really nice machine. It's just a, one of those, you know, heavy duty machines that are built to last and just, uh, you know, a routine maintenance on them really keeps them going. But so you can see now the vacuum pump um, has kicked on. Like I said, it's being controlled by the software. It's going to start pulling down a vacuum on the green line here on the graph. And as it speeds up, um, the vacuum will be pulling down. And here over here, you can see vacuum um, pressure lowering and the speed rising and then also now we're on online on both our temperatures so we got uh, the temperature one and temperature two and they are measuring the temperature which we don't have no samples in right now it's just measuring um, the temperature off of the actual swing bucket on the rotor so um, but same thing you would put your sample in there and um, then you got your chamber temperatures and then uh, your RPMs here and your time here. This is um, programmed to run one hour. It's programmed to then shut down, run a defrost cycle, open up the drain, drain all the, the condenser, and then shut the the drain and be ready for the next run. So like I said, it's a really nice option for those long runs that you can leave overnight and you want to be able to come in in the morning and have everything ready to go to re do another run. So I think I've covered a lot of things on this. Um, you know, like I said, this, this the, 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 the thing is running good. We'll get, once everything gets up, pressure comes down and you'll get a nice steady line across the chart here. And I've ran this for quite a few hours just to make sure everything's running good. But like I said, if you got any questions, you know, how I uh, modified the pump and was able to do that, you know, give me a call here at New Life Scientific and I am free to answer any questions on this system. Uh, we've sold many ones just like this. We just shipped some over to the UK um, that have done a lot of work, like I said, and uh, they've been really pleased with this. So we have this one up and uh, I think you would really um, appreciate the amount of work that I've done to this. So I appreciate you watching. And uh, like I said, Rich at New Life Scientific.